This is V-Rock. 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 Chops. guy in the city of Memphis. Uh, he was putting, he's been putting it down for years throughout the city, especially uh, with his time at Emacio Walker, just to name one of his first stops. That's why I first met him. So uh, got to give it out to my big bro, Marvin Payne Jr. So everybody put your hands together. Give me a quick little drum over here, Marvin. What's going on? What's going on, everybody out there? How y'all doing? Man, I'm pretty sure they're gonna say we all right. So yeah, man, I appreciate that, man. Hey, listen, Chop Nation, I like to be transparent in what uh what I do. Uh, I had a tragedy to strike um my Kahoma family today. Actually, one of my percussion players, my cymbal players, she transitioned over to be, you know, with God. I, I believe in Jesus, so she went to heaven to be with Jesus today, and uh, kind of you know a little heavy hearted about that situation. So I uh, keep um. Uh, Keep us in your prayers as we deal with this, and most definitely keep her family, her mother, her father, her brothers and sisters, all her relatives in your family. Uh, Denitra Dickerson, CCP, uh, Fall 2020. So I just had to get that out. I appreciate you, Marvin, for letting me do that too. This your time to shine. All right, go right ahead, man. Go right ahead, man. My condolences, man. Appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. So listen, we're gonna jump right on into these questions, y'all. Uh, we're gonna start with the same old, same old. So what high school did you attend? And if you attended college for the people that don't know, what college did you attend? See, this is a tricky one right here because uh, I attended and graduated from Hillcrest High School in Memphis, Tennessee. Okay. But at that time, Hillcrest didn't have what we call show style marching band. So I really spent like, Two of my years at Carver High School marching in their band. Oh. I was able to do that. I was real good friends with the director, and he let me march over there, even though I went to a whole nother school. Okay. But it was two different marching styles, and that's really where I learned how to contrast show style and core style marching band because it was here, Crest was core, Carver was show, show style. Really? So I kind of had a little bit of the best of both worlds in high school. I don't listen. This is Black History Month, so I'm getting some Black History. I did not know Hillcrest was a core style marching band in the hood of the Haven. You know, that's one of the yep, outskirts. Yep, yeah. Yep, yep. One of the uh, directors, man. He used to work at the uh, shop there at SES, man. Claude Chisholm was my band director, man. Wow. God rest his soul. Yeah, yes, man. Sir. Rest in peace, mm-hmm. Claude, man. I worked with Claude uh, when I first started working for uh, Shelby County Schools, man, he was uh, in this shop. Yep, man. Yep. He was my band director. Oh, wow. My, listen, more history. I didn't know that, man. Shout out to Claude, man. Rest <laughs> in peace. I say that every time. Rest in peace. Rest in peace or RIP Claude. Cool, man. He was a bad uh, technician on fixing those instruments, bro. Cool. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, the second part of the follow-up to that question was, for the people that don't know, what college did you attend? Uh, I marched at uh, Tennessee State University from uh, 98 to uh, 
2000 or uh, spring 2000. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't finish because at that time, my grandmother had developed type 2 diabetes and uh, really wasn't nobody there with her. So I was like, man, I want to finish school, but man, when there's something life changing like that and somebody need to be there with her 24 seven, you know, that's what made me come back home to Memphis. I got you, man. It's all good, bro. Listen, I didn't finish either. We doing all right. So cool, man. The next question is uh yeah, we doing all right. Yeah, man. You know, it's all right, it's all good. We're gonna we're gonna make it. Uh my my second question would be, man, what is your favorite drum movement and why do you consider it to be your favorite? You know what? Uh I really didn't have a favorite because you gotta know the basic 40 anyway. But as I went on down the years and started teaching uh kids, my I like all the diddle rudiments. I'm talking about uh, single, double, triple, prayer diddle diddle. Prayer diddle diddle is really my favorite. You can okay. do some serious damage with that. And then, you know, now you can add the flam to all the diddles and you can do something real serious with that. So yeah. if you want to say what my favorite rudiments are, it's got to be them diddles. Got you, man. I got you, man. All right. So my next um, question will be what was that moment for Marvin Payne Jr.? to say, hey, I want to play drums. This is what I'm going to do. What was that moment for you? Oh, funny story. Uh, the mo I can say, because at first, I wanted percussion. I was actually a horn player. I actually played very power. OK. So, but, the, but that moment was after I left Lanier Junior High and went into uh, South Memphis Middle School, they used to have what's called Jeff Reed drummers, you know, drummers that was right. all on the stands and all that. And I got into that pretty heavily before I started marching. Mm -hmm. And so when I got into that, it was like, okay, with this Jeff Reed stuff, you got girls, you got drums. Mm -hmm. It was almost the best of both worlds. So it was like, if you was a drummer, you was getting girls. Okay. And it's, I mean, that's still true to this day. If you yeah. uh, play any type of percussion, you get the girls first. So right, that right. was my mindset. <laughs> and man, I've been rolling with that ever since. I got you, man. I got you, man. Cool, cool. So what was uh that's how I got my wife. I play drums. I, well, what was your uh your one of your favorite drum memories? Uh whether it was margin teaching or whatever, one of those moments that just stand out to you. What was what what is that moment for you? Man, I got I got a couple of moments, man. I know the the very first moment is, well, I had a couple of culture shops. When I first got to TSU, mind you now, I'm coming from, I graduated from Hillcrest. Right. We straight jamboree on, on the stands and everything. So I, I was like, TSU was, I was destined to go there. You know, shout out to uh, Trey Clarence Johnson. You know, he was the first one from uh, Hillcrest to go up there playing on the tribe. Right. And I was like, well, he had been telling me, man, you need to go ahead and come up here to the state. You need to come up here to the state. When I had a lot of folks heavily influencing me to go to Jackson because I got family in Mississippi. They were like, man, look, you can come stay with us for a year. You can be an in-state student. Then you can go to Jackson. You got to pay the amount of state fee. Um, so I had a lot of stuff weighing. But I, I heard, uh, man, TSU in 97, that 97 year when they had the band that – Man, that band could have took out anybody these days. Uh -huh. But the percussion section was, when I say they kicked everybody out the band, and you know what I'm talking about? In 97, yeah. they had all freshmen. And they had the percussion at the bottom of the band. That was something I've never seen in uh -huh. my life. I was like, why is the drummers at the bottom and not at the top? And But I seen why. When you watch the video, they were super experienced. experienced. So it was like, when 98 rolled around, I was graduating. I was like, man, I'm heading up state. I mean, I already know uh, people that can, you know, get me in the door. And, man, that's where I'm going to play. Cool. All right, so cool. That'll work, man. Uh, what is one of your biggest takeaways uh, that you applied from all your years of playing, marching, and teaching? that you apply to now, you know, in your life and where you are now and continue to teach and all this stuff? Man, one of the biggest takeaways I've got, man, is having the ability to give kids 
that didn't have the chance to do what I did. You know, you got kids these days, man, that don't even get out the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But if I'm there to get them an opportunity to get out of that neighborhood and see something they would have never seen, then, you know, that's my, my one up for me. I think one of my biggest things was the last year, matter of fact, right before they shut everything down with COVID, mm -hmm. I was able to get the current school where I, where I was at, at um, KIPP, uh, Memphis Collegiate High School. I was able to take that drum section down to Louisiana to see yeah. Grambler. And that was, that was one of my biggest things for me because I kept telling them, I said, man, y'all done seen the Jacksons, y'all done seen the TSU, y'all done seen the Lanes, y'all done seen all the main colleges in the Mid-South. Y'all need to see somebody outside of that nucleus. And when they was like, well, Gremlin's going to be there, I said, man, I got to get these kids down here about hook about crook. Um, and they really enjoyed themselves down there and it opened their eyes up to, you know, percussion is not just Memphis, Mississippi, Arkansas. Yeah. It's it's worldwide. Yeah. So, man, for me to do that with a bunch of kids out of North Memphis that you know, nobody, I ain't going to say anybody want to take a chance with, but, you know, sometimes you just got to get opportunities where opportunities are set. And I was able to do that. And that was one of my big ups before, you know, this pandemic shut everything down. Right. Cool, man. So that'll work, man. Uh, let's start at the beginning. So I know um, you 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 say you went to Hillcrest, you marched at a Hillcrest your last two years. So let's let's start right. So I'm I'm thinking ninth. I mean, high school started tenth grade, or did you start at ninth grade with Hillcrest? Oh, uh, I actually started at ninth grade at Carver High School because Carver had seven through twelve. I was still in South Memphis. Okay. So, I actually started in the band ninth grade uh, at Carver High School playing drum. That's when I first got introduced to pretty much marching band. You know, this was at the time where uh, Westwood was coming off of that uh, big Rose Bowl parade. And, you know, I was just getting just introduced to the world of uh, marching band. So I stayed there my ninth grade year, then my 10th grade year, I was like, I got to go back to what my roots was, which was Jamboree playing. So that's how I ended up going to Hillcrest. And, you know, uh, I had already knew Trey from middle school. So it was like, he was trying to get me over there with him because he was like, man, look, this is my senior year. I'm trying to go out with a bang. And I know you can help me do this. So that's how I ended up at Hillcrest. And, man, you know, me and him, man, was, was thick as thieves, man. We did so much. Man, crap throughout that doggone school, man. We they they called us the, the well, what's the word I want to use? The uh drummers that always got in trouble, man. I remember sitting in a classroom and man, them folks started calling names over the intercom and we were listening. We were like, man, what are all drummers' names? They pulled us in a big old conference room and said, All right, who broke into the band room? I said, What make y'all think we broke into the band room? They said, because of uh, the office that was broken into the glass what went there. It was there when y'all practiced in there. I said, so y'all gonna blame us just because we drama. So, you know, stories like that, man, we was like, well, if you're gonna suspend one, you might well send all of us home because good none of us do it. So, you know, that's one of the things I learned about our brother who was starting there. Yeah, okay. So cool, man. So um, so when let's say uh, your junior year when you were playing with Carver. And you know, you still was at Hillcrest. Were there any conflicts of interest, uh, like same day performances that you had to navigate through? Now, see, that was one of the things that uh I was kind of cool with because at that time, uh Hillcrest was doing a lot of concert stuff. They weren't really into the march, and so it was like I'm able to do all the concert, fulfill all my stuff, my grades in my class, and Shoot, when it came time to march a parade, I was marching with Carver. And okay. the biggest thing was uh, I was having to catch the bus. Yeah. So I knew Carver uh, practice probably was uh, 2.30 to like, man, whenever they told you to go home. That's how I used to be <laughs> back in the day. Yeah. So, you know, it was like, okay, uh, I get out, the, get out of school at here, Chris. I'm like, okay, I ain't got no practice over here. So I know at least uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I can head over there. And I know Friday's uh, football game, uh, Hillcrest Band wasn't doing football games unless it was homecoming. So I was able to, you know, get in a couple of football games. So 
man, I travel, hit the bus, man, I got to get out of practice. Oh, uh, man, they'll drop me back off in Whitehaven. And, man, that was an ongoing circle for, like, two years. Oh, yeah, man. Seems like you had that thing figured out over there, man. Yeah, I had I was one of the few that was fortunate to do it. You know, I had a couple of folks that tried to do it the way I did. And I was like, see, where y'all messed up at is that you didn't have a relationship with the band directors. And you just tried to, you know, bombard your way. And the school, see, the thing about it was, if you weren't enrolled in this school, you had to really be incognito. In, incognito, that's the word I want to use. So, I, I man, look, they never knew if I was a student there or not, unless somebody told them. So, uh -huh. that's the way I was able to get away I with I guess, that. you know, you going to ninth grade kind of helped, you know, oh, yeah, he, he went here. So, it kind of helped you out a little bit, too. Yeah, yeah, he kind of, but, you know, once you got with that new administration, uh -huh. and, you know, they get to look it in and, and want to ask questions, but I was type person, man, I didn't make no big moves or no, you know, big clown or nothing. So yeah. it couldn't be like, well, I know he don't go here. So it really wasn't, you know, none of those instances where I had to go through that. So I was pretty chill with what I did. So who was the band director at Carver? I can't remember if you said it or not. It, it, at that time, uh, Ricky Miller was over there. Okay, old oh, Miller, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rick and Miller and uh, John Wash, they actually had uh, two directors. Uh, I guess they was able to pull that off because at that time, Carver was almost 900 to 1,000 students. So, uh, yeah, we they was able to uh, pull that off. So they had two directors over there. And the lucky thing about that was we was able to have uh, a nice size band over there mm. because at the time uh, John Washington was in the band room, he was in the front office doing schedules, so he was able to put who he wanted to put in the bands, in the band class, so it was kind of like a win-win on that. Yeah, man, and uh, I remember uh, hearing stories uh, when I was coming up, honestly, I never seen um, Carver produce anything, but I knew from, you know, hearing about them back in the 90s, everybody talked about how good Carver was, or, but, you know, uh, well, tell me about, you know, tell me about the talent level that was over. I knew um, I had a student, one of my former students, his dad played at Carver. So it was uh, Courtney, Courtney Clark. So, yeah, 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 man. As a matter of fact, man, I was up under Courtney, man, my ninth grade year, man. Okay. Man, shout, out, shout out, shout out, yeah, shout out to him, man. He he was one of the main ones that taught me how to play. No, oh. I'm, you know, I give my shout out to that. He was one of the ones that really just, set me in a doggone room because I started off on tenor drum, downright tenor, you know, uh, and he was like, man, if you want to play snare, man, you got to put in the work. So these would be times after practice, I get with him, hour or two, trying to, man, learn, get my craft together. So, yeah. yeah. Hey, man, so who, what, name a couple other guys. I don't, like I said, I don't remember. I know Courtney, uh, simply because, you know, dealing with him, yeah, he 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 was there and he was there uh in '95. That was his senior year, and for a hot little minute, that's where I met Willie Hall. You know, Willie Hall had Jack came from Westwood, mm. and he came over to Carver for a hot minute. Uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, who else was there in my ninth grade year? Because we pretty much had. Yeah, we was okay. You know, we weren't knocking nobody out the park, but we okay. weren't no suckers either, as they say. So, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So from there, you know, a lot of the cats that uh, I kind of marched with, you know, they played drums because, you know, you was in the hood, you took the class, you know, you y'all roll with each other. So a lot of them didn't think of college, uh, going to college that, after I got out of high school, it was like, man, once I'm through with, you know, this, I'm through with this. So yeah. that was kind of a lot of the folks I, you know, marched with at car, but then, you know, the piggyback uh, off in here, because it messed around my senior year. I was the only senior in the band because they didn't want to cooperate with what the vision of the band director. I said, man, I don't care what y'all talking about. I know I'm going to Tennessee State, and I need to get all the knowledge I need to get beforehand uh, yeah, I can not do it or not, but in doing it, it taught me how to be a leader because all the underclassmen up under me, you know, they looked up to me. Uh -huh. So it was like, man, I'm talking about, man, we go in the lunchroom, you know, in the lunchroom, you had a football team, you got the seniors, then you got, you know, your cheerleaders, and then it was the band. It was like, we come in there 
probably 30 deep. Yeah. Them following two people. And I was one of the two because I was seeing. I was like, man, ain't no God around here. But now, you know, they wanted to see how it was. So kind of had to show them the way around there. Yeah, man. I know um college football team was good for a good little while, even up until when I was in school. So matter of fact, yeah. um, my cousins, uh, I had some cousins, the Crowders, they went to their side because I stand Crowder. He went to Carver. He was a bad boy. He actually ended up playing for the Steelers uh, for a brief period of time to graduate from uh, from Carver. Man, I hate that. Man, look, I hate they kind of closed that school down, man, because Carver had a storied history, man. And, you know, uh, what really kind of sealed the fate for this school was the neighborhood. You know, how you had those big neighborhoods where you kind of produce kids, man. A lot of the... Uh, Parents and stuff, man, were old over there, and mm -hmm. once they started moving out of the neighborhood, yeah. man, it was kind of smelling the end for a lot of those schools over there because there were no more kids in the neighborhood. Right. Because yeah. when I, man, when I went, like I said, we were there it was almost. You would think what's the enrollment at White Haven? Uh, probably now what three thousand, something like now that. About 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 twenty two hundred, twenty three hundred, something like that. About twenty two hundred. Man, imagine fifteen hundred in the nineties is equivalent to twenty two hundred there now, um, and that's what he used to sit at Carver. Carver, Carver was huge. Carver, you know, back then, you know, you had Carver, then you had Booker T. Washington, uh -huh. all those schools out in South uh -huh. Memphis. You know, no man, shoot, that was that was, that was history around there. And then, yeah. uh, well, it's funny, call BT, BTW had uh, they had some classic guys to come through. I don't know, you know, uh, Earth Wind and Fire, uh, Maurice White, BTW. Yep. Uh, Yep. Uh, David Porter went to BTW, uh, then played. I'm sorry, and played uh, in the band. So, yeah, it's BTW. Got a, I'm uh, trying to think. Look, I'm trying to think of some of the folks, man, that came through uh, Carver, man, that was my through Stack Soul Music. I know my mom used to tell me the Tim Priest uh, graduated from Carver. They used to do concerts and everything uh, in school, you know. Yeah. I'm trying to think it's it's some more yeah. that you know roll through there. So man, look, like I said, man, those schools have story history out there, man. I yeah. just hate that a, a lot of folks don't, you know, know, you know, just didn't know about it because they were tucked off in the hood. Yeah, that's typically how it goes, man. So cool, man. So you know, you made your decision in life, you made a real good one. Say, hey, look, my next level of education is gonna be the greatest. University on on Earth, so so let's yeah, let's talk yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, and you went in there with, with with some legends, my bros, my big bro, uh, one of my mentors, Steve Potts. You know, he gave you homage uh, for helping him a lot. And uh, Virtus. So it's y'all three, you Potts and Virtus were the three freshmen, and then Trey, correct? Um, oh, uh, me. Uh, that freshman year was me. Pots, Virtus, Cheese came in with us. I was talking about just bass uh, drums. I was talking about just bass drums. Oh, just five bass drums. Yeah. yeah, it was just uh, us three. And uh, how they right. added Trey was actually funny because, you know, they had a little convocation, the first performance for the band, and it was all freshman bass drummers. And mm -hmm. it wasn't mm -hmm. like they couldn't say, uh, uh, no, uh, we need to stick somebody that's other class and up there. Y'all was stuck with us. But we held it down. That's how Trey ended up playing bass. Because yeah. the actual first performance, he was on Teledrome. I was like, man, this has got you all over the place. Yeah, man. He was so he ended up playing. Yeah, he, he ended up playing bass because it made him the only upperclassman right. that has marched in the band uh -huh. with us. And Trey was like, man, all my guys from Memphis all playing bass, man. It's okay. end of story. So let's talk about that time going into TSU all the way to your – so you finish that ride with TSU, man. Let's talk about it. Just go through it, man. However you wanna, however you wanna take this story, man. Whatever you do from from the first day. Man, you got, look, you man, man, look. Uh, first off, you know I wasn't used to all the exercising that they was doing. So when the first day, man, they hit me with that, man, I almost didn't come back. I ain't even gonna be like this, man. It took it took parts of them to come to the room and say, man, you get up out of this bed, man. They used to oh, man. have to drag me because I, I I wasn't used to none of that. You know, we mm -hmm. didn't, I mean, they had us, man, doing calisthenic exercises, man, running, organized, jogging. And I'm like, man, when did this become the military? <laughs> and, so, man, look, I, I, I wasn't forward, but boy, man, one of the funniest times I know is when we started learning uh, we started learning the sequence. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Now you already know that in Memphis, everybody had got a hold to a lot of uh, uh, TSU material. Uh-huh. So we pretty much knew the sequence, knew the nuances of it. Uh-huh. But you know, you got that golden rule of percussion. When you go in somewhere, you yeah. gonna act like you don't know that. All right. You know, the only because if you act like you know something and then they catch you on something, you know, make it a little bit worse than what it is. So right. uh when we went in there, this is the first time I met Johnny Lane. And oh. when I say he man, he was a cool, cool cat. I was like, I said, man, what what, what who are they got teaching us? And when he came out and said, Man, you know, uh you just he was like, you just see my work all over the United States. He had this doggone legato drum. Uh-huh. About yay long, he was. I think he, at that time he was teaching at Eastern Kentucky, and he yeah. come down here for the camp. Uh-huh. And that's the first time he was like, "Y'all, y'all just seen something with uh, Southern University with that mommy glad and all that." He said, "I created that." He started doing it in camp, and I was like, "Man, that man that is like God seeing." <laughs> so we, you know, I was like, "Well, I know, man, we gonna be straight." So we get to learn the sequence, and. We started doing what typical Memphis folks do. We know it, but we ain't just playing it. You know, right. we kind of going through the motions or whatnot. And all I know from there, Johnny Lane came in there one day and he said, stop, stop. He said, and I kind of, kind of trying to quote exactly how he said it. He said, you look at me. <laughs> That's how he said it. He was like, I know y'all know this sequence, man. So he was like, man, play this doggone sequence uh, like it's supposed to be played. And then from here on out, man, we played that thing too. He said, that's how it's supposed to sound. Yeah. He said, man, y'all are going to be the freshman class that's going to change the history of Tennessee State University. And he's prophetic in their words. <laughs> I, 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 was, I was there for it. I mean, and he, man, I'm talking about, he said, Y'all gonna be the ones that's gonna, gonna change it, and so then at the same time, we were getting five of skins that year. Okay, <laughs> this is the story I want to tell you about. This was, okay. you know, this was the year we got five skins. We didn't get the ones that they play with now. We got the five skin twos, and if you're a bass player, you know five skin twos that are playing on some uh some coated paper, some pretty paper. Because <laughs> once you get the, <laughs> once you get to beating them down, it's over with. Yeah. So, we had all watched the 97, the whole 97 season was like, man, we came like that. Not knocking them. It was just that, you know, they were playing on every pinstripes. Couldn't really hear them. And they were sitting in front of the camera. So we was like, man, we can't go out like that. Yeah. So when we got the heads, they were used to hearing how Jackson played with them. Uh-huh. Now, you all know if you was a bass, see, back in the day, bass drum from Memphis, we knew how to muffle the drum heads, uh-huh. period. You know, that was, that was more of a Memphis thing than it was. The folks say, well, Jackson been doing that. I was like, man, I beg to differ. We were doing that in Memphis. I'm talking about every other school had their little square box uh-huh. sitting at the bottom of their bass drum head. If you didn't know it, it's because your marks were ebony pinch right, but you could tell the difference in the sound when you do it. Uh-huh. So when we got up there and we, you know, put the drum, you know, tone the drum, did we did, we got the plan on. Everybody was like, "Oh, <laughs> sound like that." That's exactly what they was like. I was like, "Man, look." Uh, Virtus came to me. He's like, "Man, you already know we're going to put something inside these drums." I was like, "How?" He said, "Man, I got an idea." So it was the week of MTSU game, first game of the season. Uh, you know, it was only four of us, me, uh-huh. uh, Virtus, uh, Potts, and Trey. Yeah. So that Friday before that game, I think me and Virtus snuck into the band room about midnight. You know, normally they come and lock up the buildings and everything. Yeah. But, you know, back in the day, that was kind of lax. You know, you ain't had no fools like you got now where you yeah. got to boat down and everything. So, you know, band room stayed open. Don't, don't ask me how it was open. So, you know, me and Virtus then went in there. They brought the duct tape. We had the roll of paper towel. And, you know, we just hit up, hit up the bass drums we played with. So now, you know, before you go to the game, so we were going to MTSU, so we right up the street. Yeah. We get in the band room. They want to, like, how the drums sound? How the drums sound? Somebody shut up, man, before y'all get us in trouble, man, before we even leave the building. 
Because, you know, once you get there and you're in the stadium, ain't no, oh, what the heck, what, what that sound is, what, you know, what's going on? You can't stop. You can't turn back. Right. So um, we got there, and when we got to warming up with the band in the band room, we had, it was, since it was only four of us and it was six bass drums, we was like, man, we're going to take turns two and two warming up with the band with the other two drums that we did do. Because right. he didn't want the full section playing no way. So, right. you know what I'm saying? We can keep it up on the wraps. Right. So, once we did that and everything, we got on the bus, I said, my these folks going to be in for a surprise. Because that year, TSU probably marched 186. We won over 200. All right. So, as a matter of fact, this was the year you had uh, Big Red and it was in the band. Uh, uh, Mike had Mike Cowles had just came back, I think, from Southern. He was in the uh, band playing trombone. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the directors that you see Pretty now, sure. I actually marched in the band with yeah. uh, at Tennessee State. Man, we got to MTSU, and this was their first game in a new stadium. Mm -hmm. So we had to play with MTSU to kind of break this record with over 500 band members. Of, some, you know, you know how it is, oh, yeah. band collaborations. Yeah. So, you know, that we did. Yeah, so we 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 did it or whatnot. So what they were like, they were like, well, we want to hear TSU play. We were warming up with them because I think MTSU played some and went first. And so Dean, he was like, all right, let's run the top of the show, which that year was the top of the show was a drunk entrance. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, it was OJ. OJ was entering, going into Usher my way. So, man, did nobody know nothing we did to the drums. After they called us to attention and the drum major blew that whistle, man, I promise you, it sounded like pure D thunder back there with the four of us. The <laughs> whole band looked back and was like, what is going on back there? And I can tell they hyped up the band because that first sound that came out of that, uh, the instrument, yeah, boy, they was ready to go. Yeah, They were ready to go. So, man, that was kind of like the origin of that and Man, we got the message. Everybody kept saying that what well, we wasn't gonna do to Jackson. Man, y'all ain't ready for Jackson. Y'all ain't. We were like, man, look, they don't. They don't intimidate us. Yeah. And so when y'all heard us come into Memphis, that Memphis game with only four bass drummers, and we were filling up the bowl. That was the reason why we had them twenty six inch. Oh, uh, and that's the thing. We didn't have no twenty eight. We had no thirty. We was on twenty six. Yeah. And yeah. we had them fine muffled up boy. We bring him the noise. If you think I'm lying, go was it the pearls? Go find a video. I'm gonna look for oh it. yeah, we was on the pearls. We was on the red pearl. Yeah, hey, man. Them drums drum. Them drums is loud, man. Them some loud drums. Man, bro. we was on the red pearls, man. Had them fine <laughs> muffled up, man. We kind of man got a man, nice little ring to them, man. We were filling up the ball. I'm gonna tell you hmm. what's dope about TSU, how they take care of stuff. We they still have those same drums in practice with them. That's called taking care of your stuff, man. This is what, 12 or 20 years? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's over 20 years. You, you, you sure know right about that. Yeah, and, man, look, I think after the Memphis game is when the drums started sounding like paper and everybody was trying to figure out, why they sound like that? Uh, I said, man, they five skin tools. And we didn't put tape on the. I don't think you put tape on the matters. I can't even remember if right. you did or didn't. But still, you know, once you get to beating down on five skin tools, yeah, man, no you got to get more heads. Yeah. And... Yeah. And Prof. Graves was like, man, I'm not going to keep giving y'all heads. Next set of heads, y'all get the whole time. I was like, you got to be serious. Well, they, well, they fiber skills, did y'all get the dots? Because I know when Pops was there, they had dots uh, a couple of times they had to play on those ones. They, pro they probably got them dots in 99, but I know all of 98, we marched with the uh, fiber, skin. fiber skin tools. And uh, when we did it, we were, you know, we, we did, I got to think about this story here. This is how we actually got caught. With the paper towel drum, we had to go to a battle of the bands in South Carolina because I think TSU had an off week of football. So, you know, we went to the battle of the band. TSU had to do a percussion feature. Mind you, now, normally, majority of our games are at night. So, you know, majority of games at night, you know, those nighttime lights don't shine through the drum. Uh -huh. This is another thing about the five or ten two. You know, the head is light, the head is thin. You can see. With the right amount of sunlight. Uh -huh. So next thing I know, TD, because TD was our cussing instructor. Okay. And uh all I know, he said, man, them drums sound flat on the field. And we was like, uh, because he's sitting up top. 
Now right. we get back up in the stands and he looked and seen through the sun, them little box in at the bottom. All you heard was, we get back to the school, take that <laughs> shit <out of> <laughs> <room."> <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I said, I said, we caught that. That's yeah. what I told him. I said, Man, so, you know, from there, we got back to the school. And at that time when we took him out, the drone started sounding like trash again. Uh-huh. And so, sexually, the uh, big ant. He's like, man, y'all got to put that back in them drums, man. Them drums don't even sound right without it. I was like, well, we're going to have to wait the homecoming. That's what happened the homecoming the next week. So we was able yeah. to slide them things back in there. But, yeah, yeah, that was some of the times, man, that, you know, we had to kind of carve our own way. And by me being from South Memphis, we can make a way out of nowhere. Of course. And so, like I said, shout out to Virtus, man. We, man, me and her, man, made a dude to do on them doggone drums. And, man, from there... Man, like I can all I can say is the rest of history. Yeah. And I know, man, like I say, uh that influence carried over until even through my yeah, I went into middle school in ninety nine. I was that when I got into my first band it was in nineteen ninety nine, but it was just a classroom band with uh Teddy Hall. Yeah, Teddy Hall, Teddy Hall was my band teacher, <clears throat> but ninety ninety nine, two thousand. Two thousand is when uh is when I uh actually got to um uh, got to be a part of a band and we used to put that paper towel that little you get the little brown paper towel. Brown paper <laughs> towel folded up the little square. Uh, yeah. And, and man, listen, we did that. I even I, I did that because for uh for me it was a Jackson reference when I was coming up. So I did the paper towel and the drum head. All the way up to, I want to say, my 10th grade. I think I was on tall trees left. On trees left, whatever. And mm-hmm. it was, um, trees left, it was me and Mike, yo. Know, so we did it maybe the fall, my junior year. After that, I took them out, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I was learning then. I, I was learning and listening. So I didn't do too much, especially my senior year. I was really done with Jackson. I like Anything they doing, I'm doing the opposite. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? So, you know, <laughs> opposite. And matter of fact, I'm gonna tell you, uh, my senior year, and uh, Trey Munn, I remember for years he used to say, "Man, come help, come tune my drums and fairly, man, like you did, that like you had while having tuned in the uh, in the Liberty Bowl that year with the Bodacious, who was in the Liberty Bowl. We had the white emperors. We had no fiber skin. That was it." White Empress, nothing inside the head. And I took my time. I want to say that was after probably my first or second. It might have been my second, Johnny Lyon Clinic, when he was he actually was talking about tuning a little bit. And then um, at that time, I was looking at, I used to watch, because I play set, so I bought a lot of DVDs. And back then, a lot of the DVDs, they had like little tuning. Uh, techniques in them, so you know, going a little to little X uh, cross to cross. So that's be my thing. I didn't learn about tuning to uh, uh, and then that particular year, I wasn't tuning to pitch at all. I didn't understand it. I didn't really fully understand pitch. I didn't learn pitch until I got to Tennessee State. You know, learning to you know, tune to the GF and uh, stuff like yep. that uh, for, for prop lane talk. So, um, but I tuned them. Just, I took my time, dude, and I had a thirty. And then I think the next it was two thirties. Matter of fact, it was two thirties, two twenty eights, and the rest of them were twenty sixes. Hey man, man, I tell you, I took my time and tuned them joints. Kyrie, they got the tape, but that was the best tune job. Well, one of the best, you know, when I was younger, one of the best tune jobs. But uh, but yeah, I used to do that same thing. But I didn't know Tennessee State uh used to do the paper towels, and I never knew that because we always thought it was a Jackson thing. You know that was. That's what you saw do it. You know what I'm saying? And then you, they made sure you could see theirs in the light. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, you, you. I almost want to say they still do. It. It's kind of like the tradition. I don't, I'm not, I'm not for certain, but it's cool. It, it gave them a, it gave them a distinct sound. You know what I'm saying? A good thump, and uh, Tennessee State had that good clarity. So <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So you man, right about this. Yeah, man. So. For me, you know what I'm saying? One of one of one of the where I met you at was in 2002. You you end up at this school that had just got built. 
that was once the fair was a little a little amusement park sitting off the side of Rain Road over there down the Al's little- Al's Golf Haven. Yeah, Al's that's it. I, matter of fact, I remember I went there one last time with my uncle. Uh, rest in peace, uncle. That's right. Rest in peace, Uncle Chris. I bet you I said I might be getting there some messed up, but he took us there. Um, one of the last times that was the last time I remember going, and then the next time I heard about it, it was a freaking school. I'm like, who? And man, y'all came yeah. in that thing, and Maceo Walker came. I don't know. I don't know if y'all. I think y'all opened that school just for band kids because y'all came in that joint in 2002 with so many band. I'm like, God, dog, no, where all these folks come from? I like I, man, I, we had a hundred and fifty. we had hundred and fifty band members in that middle school band. That first year. That first year was one hundred and fifty. Man, listen, and so that was one of the the the. That's how I knew because I didn't. You know, what I'm saying I was I wasn't around, but that's how I found out about Marvin. You know, what I'm saying you've been at Emacio Walker, and doing what you're doing with Emacio over time, and as I got older and uh started, you know peeking up there every now and again to check y'all out and, you know, listen to you and watch. Cause I learned from watching you, how you interact with your kids and stuff. So like I say, I've been real, real good at uh, adapting and just taking little, little gems that I see, what is somebody doing and uh, not doing or what I, you know, and I always was able to put that into me and kind of, so let's talk about your time. Uh, and man, I'm gonna ask you this, cause a lot of your kids, man, a lot of your kids, I remember we were, uh, Farrell was down right. I mean, matter of fact, I'm going to say his name, Andrew Carpenter. He was at a Mesa. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was like, I was like, hey, man, you want to come to Wahab? But I was still in school. He like, man, I ain't going to Wahab. I don't like up right. I'm down right. Because y'all were down right. He was like, I like down right. I was like, okay, cool. So Farrell, he was the Farrell that was down right. And then they converted to up right. I was like, oh, so they up right. You stay, okay? So I remember that. So, but, you know. I like man, a lot of fair. I mean, a lot of baseball kids. They want to go to fair, man. I'm like, man, how much? What they paying you over there, man? <laughs> but no, man, look, like, that 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 there was. I, all I was like, I just opened up the door, and whoever wanted to come in and get yeah. because y'all had a lot of kids that actually went What's to white. Hey, oh yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just messing with you, bro. I'm, listen, mm-hmm. I remember. I, I know. I know. Every I can't remember names. I know only name I can remember off the top of my head was Shakaya. Uh, she go by Suave now. And it was one more. It was one more. She had the, uh, you know, uh, with the eyes. She had the little heavy eyes. Play some. Oh, oh, I know who you're talking about. You can't forget about Jeremy Malone. I, I, I'm talking about the girls. I was going through the girls. Oh, you talking about all the shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I know Jeremy. I ain't going to forget Jeremy. Jeremy got, man, I'm going to tell you this story about Jeremy Malone, man. You know he was a hothead. Uh, yep. Yeah. His ninth grade year, man. I'm going to tell you about this dude. We, he he was in, he had a beef with somebody at Hillcrest. For some reason. I don't know why. And so, man, we at the Whitehaven. It was either, it was either, it was either the Southern Harris Battle Bands or the Wahab Battle Bands, Dr. Pepper or Tyson's, one of them two. And um, man, he was talking crazy. Jeremy stayed talking crazy to people outside the gate. You know what I'm saying? We in the stands, and you know, this is ninth grade year. Back then, Wahab, we were, you know, hey, <laughs> we'll tie you up real quick. But uh, <laughs> that was like his ninth grade year. He was like rebellious and everything. Like, he didn't care about the repercussions of nothing. He was just, you know, saying he was focused on whoever he was focused on, and that's who he was talking to. So he was going off, going off. Mr. Banks was still a band director, but he was transitioning into the administration. And I want to say, Jeremy came in my 11th grade year, so he was two years behind me. So, man, he, uh, we get to the game. We do the battle of bands. He said, what, what do we get through, bro? What do we get through? Well, who going to jack? When I say he wants to fight every time for everything. So, man, we get through the battle of bands. We marching out. We march to the stage. We walk to the band room. Jeremy <laughs> had walked halfway down the stage. I think he acted so bad because his mom was a sheriff. He knew he was going to be all right. I think that was part of his uh, security. Oh, yeah, you know. You know what yeah, I'm uh-huh. <laughs> but we more he, he, you know, he knew he could get away with it. He can get away with it. But <laughs> so we went all the way to the uh to the bedroom, came back out. My German going back over the hillcrest. So you know we're not gonna let our people go by themselves, right? So we going, listen, I don't even know who he was arguing with to this day. I'm gonna get him to bring him back so he gonna get destroyed, getting beat up. So I'm like, we better go get him to come bring him back. 
So it was he was going ahead. So it was like four of us chasing up behind the leaders. Leaders, I know me, Mike, two other people. And so we going to get uh get this man to bring him back. And so Mr. Banks got wind of it. He came over there. He was like, I need I want he so, 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 blah blah blah. Long story. So I want to see all y'all in the office on Monday. I like, all right. We'll go to the office. So, we, you know, the weekend go by, whatever. I can't remember if it was a game or not. Monday come. They call us. I'm talking about first thing in the morning. Mr. Banks was a band director and administrator. <laughs> he was transitioning. So, first thing in the morning, he comes in the band class with his little folder. He pointed us all out because just happened to be all in the class. Jeremy cool by this time. So, Mr. Banks said, come on, y'all. We He called us the Malone gang. I like Mr. Banks. We, me and Mike, I mean, like, we are going to get stop him from fighting. No, 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 no. So what y'all should have did, would have go over there and get his tail whooped. But y'all want to go over there. So it looks like y'all were trying to go be a game. I like y'all the Malone guy. I like Mr. Banks. He's a freshman. He in the ninth grade. <laughs> so y'all following the little kid. I like, dude, Mr. Banks turned that up every which way but right, man. Right? So, so at the end of the day, Mr. Banks like, okay, this is what we can do. Uh, y'all can take three licks because we got paddles back then. It was either three or four licks. Like, you take three licks, three or four licks, or you can get a suspension. So, all of us, the other four of us, we're like, okay, let's take our licks. Cool, we'll take them jumps. We don't buy our bed. We ain't worried about no suspension, business, or practice, none of this crap. Jeremy, like, I'll take a suspension. And then Miss Bay, like, okay, but here's the thing now, if one take a suspension, <laughs> everybody gotta take a suspension. Oh, we like, dude. You finna take these licks, bro. So you don't, don't not. Yeah, hey, listen, take these licks, man. Cause if we if we gotta go another direction, they ain't gonna be nice. So he was like, so we all get ready to go take our licks, man. Right? I go, got mine out the way. Mike went. The other two, I can't remember. I, I want to say my guy Donald Hunt and I don't know somebody else. He got his. German was last. So Mr. Banks, um, you know, he like I got losing up now. So. Jeremy been over. Jeremy was bigger. He was bigger than me. He was taller than me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. My business buddy gave him that first little pop. Pop. Man, Jeremy must have fell through that wall, man. Boo. I'm telling the story, Jeremy, so you're going to have to be mad, bro. <laughs> but my, the first <laughs> lick, he was done. Like, he done died. I'm like, we looking at this man. Like, are you serious? Mr. Banks was just cracking up. Like, man, Mr. Banks, listen, Mr. Banks' licks were not. Soup. I'm sorry, Mr. Banks. They were not super painful, but he was just accurate. So he just gonna hit the same spot. My Joe, can you hit another spot, please? <laughs> man, that, when I tell you, that was the funniest <laughs> thing. Man, we left out of that joint like, dude, you better not be. Don't you dare act tough no more, man. <laughs> so, but yeah, man, I ain't gonna never forget German Long. That's my boy, man. He was one of the ones that helped, you know, change the game as far as symbols and stuff. So, for the hey, so yeah, man. But yeah, you, you had a lot of good kids to come up out of that project. And I gotta give you your credit for teaching those young guys like that because it were, you were the only middle school percussion instructor. And I, you know, I don't know, I don't know of uh, there weren't anybody. Well, let me take that back. I think Jeter had somebody, uh, they did have somebody that was with them. But man, you took the middle school game to another level, man, and you made so many killers bro <laughs> it's it's crazy man you got brian bartley high yellow my we can go my uh norman skyler drama uh andrew of course jeremy t man you got so many kids that you groomed from because you started with them the earliest you know what i'm saying and you fed them out to the high school so man let's talk about your time in Mexico. man look Maceo, i stayed there uh seven years so man that 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 time there the Maceo boy was <laughs> man look that was a challenge in itself man because I, I always used to try to tell them cats man from where I came from man everybody gonna want you but you gotta make sure you know and I still say this to this day you gotta know how to practice performance is easy man if you don't know how to practice man performance gonna be so hard for you. And that was one of the biggest things that I kind of uh, pushed on with them. I'm like, man, you can be great, but you got to learn how to be, you got to learn how to be great. You just, I mean, greatness just don't come. So it was like, 
man, y'all, y'all got to learn how to be great, man. It just so happens that Amasia Walker, man, that was one of the biggest middle school band rooms, man. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, dude, that, that to this day, it, it's, I, yeah. for Shelby County Schools, you know, the former Memphis City Schools, I think that's the the last band room built for the, in the district. And to this day, it still looks good. And then we had, look, we had the privilege of the percussion used to practice in the back room uh, sometime. And that back room, man, we had that doggone table or whatever mm-hmm. that was about as long as the band room. So I ain't mm-hmm. never had to worry about uh, we need some room to practice on. No, I man, I can put the whole six of 25 folks on that one little spot. So, yeah. you know, we had a lot of man, privileges, like you said, man. I taught a whole lot of kids, a whole lot of percussion players yeah, coming up out of there. And yeah. what folks fail to realize, man, I'm actually going into, I want to say year 20, year 21, mm-hmm. year 21 of teaching, man. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, you're 21 to teach. Yeah. And it, it, it man, like I said, man, you you touched a lot of lives, man. You instilled uh that pride of playing in a lot of people, man. So gotta give you kudos and shout out for that aspect, bro. Cause without you, like you say, uh giving the kids a ch- a chance to have something that you didn't have, man, and no telling what they what they what the neighbor or what the band program would have been over at Base Hill, man. So I gotta give you your respect for that, bro. So I appreciate you for that too. And I know all your guys and young lady, like I said, you had the majority of the girls that play drums in the city from especially in this area, whatever area, came from you. Because hey, you won't push no girls out like that. I think I, I'm going to give you 90% of the female population that played drums in Memphis that was in this Whitehaven area. They definitely came from you. And I it, and, and, and even now, you still have that neck uh, when you were Kip. You actually have my little cousin over there. She was playing with you. You had a lot of girls, man, that you, you know, that you inspired to play. So that's 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 dope. Man, girls, girls tend to listen more to boys at the time. Yeah. You know, girl, man, with, with, with girls, you know, they'll they that the type where they'll grasp on to some and they already fighting the fact that I gotta deal with all these boys. Mm-hmm. So they can grab on to some and be where well, I can be better than the boys at doing this. And so they kind of use that as a little bit of fuel. And man, the girls that I had, man, they killed man these past man uh, years that I've been there, mm-hmm. man. Hey, they 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 were some dogs. They yeah. they were some serious dogs. Only thing they hated that they could not do was the fact that by the time I got there, it killed a lot of the uh, college decisions are pretty much made like ninth or tenth grade. Right. So a lot of them was like, man, I can't, I want to do band, but I'm kind of already set in what I'm doing. So they kind of, that's what kind of make them really put all their effort into it, why they there with me, because it's like once they threw, they threw. And I've had some that graduated and came back and be like, man, I should have took the band route. But why is that? Why is that they, they feel like uh, 19 grade, they make a decision. That they got us only hone, you know, focus on that only thing. Like I said, I was talking to um, Prof Hall in his interview. He was like, he went to school for uh, engineering mathematics, and when he got to school, like this ain't for me. I want to do music. Why don't? Why don't? Why didn't? Or why um, was that offer that I listen? If this don't work, you still can do band because if you like, I'm gonna throw this little plug in there. If you got anyone that looking to go to college, I can get them at Oklahoma. You know, I take them on in, no matter how you know what I'm saying. So. Bring them on. I'll take them. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, why did they feel like they had to stay in the field that they selected in 10th grade? Because honestly, you don't know yourself in 10th grade. You don't know yourself in 11th grade, 12th grade, freshman year, your college, third, second year of college. You really don't know yourself and know what you wanted. You know what you think to look good when you're 14, 15 years old. But as life progresses, your, your mind shifts. So why, why don't you think they, you know, sh- Decided to tell them, well, you know what, I'm gonna go do band. Man, I know the experience that I had over at Kip uh, is that band, the way band is being done there now, wasn't there for a lot of those kids when I first got there in 2017. Shout out to uh, Travis Crude, you know, Crude over there with Child, man. Right. But he's, when he came back to Memphis, he was over there 
and Kip, and he actually pulled me back in because I was about to just let it go. Yeah. You know, not just saying because I didn't want to. It was just the fact that, you know, it, it, man, like I said, at that time, it was year 16. I was burnt out. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, generation of kids they had changed. And I was like, man, I want to do, I still got it. So I'm looking at a drum section, man. When Kip was over there, my young folks had drums and harnesses. And I told them after I watched them one day, I said, man, y'all take this ride with me and y'all stick with it. Man, y'all going to enjoy it and we're going to change the world over here. That's one of the that's one of the mottos the principal say over there just about every day. You know what I'm saying? Do something to change the world. And that's mm-hmm. exactly what we did over there at Kip. And the way they had it over there is that uh, band actually wasn't uh, number one. So when I went to the principal's office, she had kind of like a a mini board Mm -hmm. and band was actually number two. Drumline was number one. Mm -hmm. They actually had it where drumline was, drumline, you could do drumline without doing band. And we was like, no, that ain't how Band work. Yeah, that's right. how they had it over there beforehand. We kind of changed a lot of that up. We was like, you're going to play in this drum line, you're going to be a part of this band. And we actually, what we did was me and Pruitt sat down and did was, we're going to start the drum line first. They already had stuff like majorettes. We added uh, flags and all that. So when we first started, we had majorettes, we had flags, and we had percussion. Mm-hmm. We did that for a whole half semester. Then mm-hmm. turned it around. The band had their first performance mid semester mm. and it grew from there. Yeah, man, y'all did. And listen, y'all did a wonderful job with Kip, bro. I swear, I, I'm not just talking. Y'all did excellent, bro. Excellent work. You know what I'm saying? And one, I think, when we go back a little bit, I remember one of the things that I, when I said I'd be watching and paying attention, I remember one year I came to Maceo and you were conducting the band and you were reading and you were reading the, the charts. You know what I'm saying? You were reading the, um, God dog, Vincent boy, you're a music major. You better say it right. You're reading the score. There we go. <laughs> you're reading the score and teaching me. I like, I asked one, I said, I said, Marvin, uh, not to read band music. And they were like, yeah. And that was one of the triggers for me. They were like, okay. Hmm. So I, I stored that in there, not knowing what I was going to do with it later. Now, you know, me getting ready to graduate uh, from school, it played a part, you know what I'm saying? So I guess I take little things from everybody. So I, I do uh I watch I saw that I saw that in you. So I I mean I saw you doing it. So I I'm like I said, I'm watch people be think may think I'll be able to be talking when I say I'm very observant and I'm watching. No, I see everything. So <laughs> yeah, man, that was one of the things when the band got so big, you know, it was like, man, look, one director can't do it all. Yeah, And like I said, I already had that origin of music because like I said, I wasn't in the original percussionist. I played home. Right. So I was like, I said, man, look, let's do it like this here. We always use the each one, teach one method, man. Give me a couple of sections. You get this section. We bring them all together. And that's when I actually started, well, actually I started learning how to write music right before I got to it, Maceo Walker. Uh-huh. And man, that's when I actually, man, a lot of the stuff that they were playing over there, I sat there and wrote, and man, I'm talking about this was when uh, I was first starting to learn how to use Sibelius and Finale. Yeah. Back then. So, you know, once I started doing that, man, I just used to be like, okay, that's a tip of the hat. So, when it was school that, you know, I go to, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to all the schools that I've been at. A lot of folks only know me for being a kid at a Macy or Walker, but I, man, look, I've been at Macy Walker. I started out, I was actually went back to Carl back. I came back uh, from Tennessee yeah. State. That's how y'all actually, uh, it t- when TSU, they were talking about uh, good old Jesse Powell, I sent them up there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was graduating that year, and I had just came back uh, from state. And I was like, man, you need to go up there. That's where it's at. And, you know, that's what he pretty much did. So I left Carl and went to Macy, man. I thought I left Macy, man. I went back to Hillcrest. Shout out to my Dr. Rodney D. Children, man. That point of time, he was at Hillcrest that one year. I might well say we had an all-star band over there, man. So we probably had whole school playing in one band. <laughs> we was all-star band before it was all-star band over there. So well, y'all y'all you know unfairly had that. Y'all, that was that was y'all, that was that was one of y'all little things right there, man. Yeah, I remember I, hey listen, I remember that showdown, man, with Hillcrest. I, I think that was Chisholm year. 
And Hillcrest grew. You know what I'm saying? They grew, and it was a decent show. They wasn't no decent. It was a good show. Now. It was Hillcrest fairly. I want to say Mitchell. It was you know what? Real. That was the year. That was the year before he died. That was a couple of years before he died. Oh, really? Okay. That was, matter of fact, when Chisholm got there in 08, a lot of those seats were starting to be built in 05, 04, 05, and 06. So who's so, the better know, record on that? that those that uh, year? That was uh, Calvin Davis that was over there. You know, they had Calvin Davis. Davis. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah he was over there, and they had a lot of here for alumni that used to come back and okay. help with the band. So how uh, at that time you had uh, playing on horn, uh, Deontay Watts, he was playing on horn, Mariko Ray, you know, you hear all them names. Mm-hmm. Now it uh, lost at Lane, Jackson State, and all that, man. They had some. And the percussion section was short change in either. I know, that was straight, man. That was, they had some deals back then. So, you yeah, know, man. that's no seats were being built. So when Chisholm got there in 08, man, we weren't doing nothing but, as I say, polishing a diamond. Yeah. And I got lucky because majority of the drum section that was in the eighth grade from the Maceo yeah, that went to here, Chris, that yeah. ninth grade year. So, mm-hmm. I, man, look, I, I used to tell them all the time, they was like, what are you doing? I said, man, polishing the diamond. But yeah. I didn't have to teach them. I already taught them. Exactly. That's so, you know, <laughs> That's uh, also, my look, also, my shout out to my uh, uh, cats, my head of time spent at Kirby High School. After I left here, Chris, for a hot minute, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. I was over there for uh, two years, man. Got to meet my uh, some young cats to end up, man, actually going to uh, uh, Kahoma for a minute, then shooting off to Jackson, man. Uh, what's that? Rotarius, she got, she got, yeah, yeah, know, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. And man, I had a chance, man, to interact with him, man, for a couple of years, then shot oh. off to that, and then actually left from there and went to East for a minute, man. I was at East oh. for two years, okay. So, you know, now you, and I, you, you've been moving, man. Yeah, nobody been, been keeping moving, up with man. man. You've been moving because I remember when East kicked back off, man, okay. Yeah. One, Ollie, you want, well, now that one with Ollie was there, because Ollie was at East too, but you weren't there with No, him. no, 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 Ollie had already left. As a matter of fact, I had went back to here because when here Chris had a showdown with East and Douglas, that's when Cos was at Douglas, yeah. Ollie was at East, oh, and um, uh, who was uh, at uh, here Chris? Man, I can't even think his name. I know his crab now because he marked at TSU. They used to call him Manage. I can't even think of that man's <laughs> name. I, I, I wish I had one of my partners. He would tell me, man, it slipped my it is slipping my mind and it, it, it's killing me. But yeah, that's when all uh three of them, we actually did a show down at East High School. I had some footage on to to to, to look at, man. Oh, and man. that was I think that was a year before Ollie left to go to Central. Okay. Cool, man. Well, listen, bro, we can talk all night, man. We can... Listen, I don't know how I don't know I don't know how long this video is, but so we're gonna have to go ahead and end it here. <laughs> and we'll uh definitely man, have to be too, man. Hey, I'm I'm definitely, bro. Man, I, 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 I got some fine look, I got some stories, man. I can tell you about the time, man. We was at the uh the ultimate battle of the bands at the Coliseum. Go ahead, and, I like uh, that. Man, look, I'm talking about my I know we had five bass drummers in that in that bowl, and I know we almost got cut down to two after the first song. Cause all I know is they called Africano and the bass drummers went ham. And so the song over with you heard the drum major sprint up the steps. He said, Man, y'all play like that again. I'm sitting all y'all down. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, listen, when you come home, man, that it just do something to you, man. You're right, it do something to you, man. Do something to you. I love the Ultimate Battle of Bands. I love the Ultimate. That's one of one of my favorite um events. Period, man. Let me let me just put this shameless plug. I, I don't care if you don't like it. Well, Haven was the very last Ultimate Battle of the Band champion, and we still have the trophy at the school. You know it's Haven forever. It's in my veins. You know it's Haven forever. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 hold on, hold on. You, while you put in plugs, I'm gonna be petty. Go ahead. Cause still seeing that Ricky Miller house is, we were the last middle school to get that ultimate battle of the band trophy. It's yeah. still at his house. Hey, go get him, man. See, on this ain't no wrong with it. <laughs>
listen, we 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 got some good man. Listen, we're gonna do some more stuff. We got some more stuff we're gonna do, bro. So but yeah, man, I appreciate you, Marvin, bro, for taking time out of your, your life, man. I get it. Man, we what almost 12 hours behind schedule, but man, you know, we had an unfortunate uh situation man, that I could look, avoid, bro. Hey, hey man, I understand that, man. Look, I'm over my partner house now. He had just as he said, man, how long you got? I said, man, look. I thought it was gonna be about four to five minutes, but man, you right. get to talk to man on some now, history you that a lot of folks don't know about. See, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I had one of the kids ask me at your last battle of the drummers when you were uh, giving out awards to uh, you know uh, a lot of your mentors, you know, uh, Steve Fox, you know, yeah. Jeff, uh, all them folks, Karen. Uh, they was like, "Why you ain't down there?" I said, "Man, I'm gonna tell you like this, sir." What's already understood don't need to be said. Oh man, listen, tell your kids, man. Listen, I'm, I'm a definitely I always pay homage to everybody, man. That's that see, I know they don't. <clears throat> look, look, here's the thing though, man. They, they, I mean, I told my said, man, look, a, a lot of folks know what I did. Y'all ain't got to see here because see, they, they, they'll go to bed for me. Oh, yeah. And what made me feel so good is when they seen TSU and a lot of the stuff that they played that day at that Battle of the Drummers, uh-huh. I'm talking about if you could have looked up and seen all of them on their top row, man, going ham. I said, man, y'all must start y'all with this. <laughs> you know, uh, 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 just this teeter talent with this. <laughs> You know, you know, now these days you got a lot of schools that's creating all their own material and everything. Mm-hmm. And I've always been a stickler of, you know, you can't create your own material if you don't know how to play material. In order for you to learn how to play material, you got to learn how to play something. So a lot of folks kind of hark on me for, man, why are you still playing a lot of the college stuff and not your original material? I said, because the groups that I have, where especially with them still transitioning in North Memphis, is that they hadn't learned how to play drums yet. Uh-huh. And a lot of folks were like, what you, you mean they playing? And me and you both know that. You got to learn how to play drums so you can start doing what it's called creating your own content. Exactly. And I tell them, I said, man, I use a lot of tissue stuff. I use a lot of text. I use a lot of folks stuff. Yeah. I said, man, that's to get them to get that knowledge and understand, man, drums is for real. Uh-huh. Drums ain't for play. Uh-huh. So when you do come up with something that's original and creative, man, it's going to be your own and you're going to appreciate it more. Of course. And like I, like I tell anybody, when uh, when we rebuilding, when we started with a least uh, experienced group, we got to get some, some stuff together and camaraderie. It's on one case that I'm going to play, and it's going to be flight. And the reason it's going to be flight, because I can work on everything in that cadence. And that's what we use. Whenever you, uh, whenever I'm you know, rebuilding, which I'm gonna have to, you know, revamp some stuff when we come back. It's gonna be flight. Man, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's 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 number one. Yeah, man. So I get it, bro. You got like you said, you gotta have something, some some standards. You know, what I'm saying marching standards, show standards to help groom them to be able to create their own stuff. So yeah, you 100% right. We I learned that even from JJ. You know, when he first came over and started working with us, man, he uh, you know, worked on some old stuff and he. Didn't, he when he got chopped them fully, that's what they played. You know, some older TSU case, and then the next year, shot off. So cool, man. Cool, bro. But man, listen, Marvin, bro. Again, we can do this all day, man. So if I want to go ahead and uh, end this jump up, so this edit won't be so bad on me. <laughs> so it's all good, bro. I'ma definitely have you. <laughs> I understand it. Let me say this for the Kip kids at uh at uh Marvin students. Listen, y'all watch this video. Number one, subscribe, okay? But the next thing is y'all have a great instructor over there at Kip. And y'all, I know y'all happy that y'all got them. So these are his flowers. I'm going to give him some better flowers when we get back open. But definitely y'all have a great one. He is a, definitely a Memphis legend here in our city, man. Uh, like I said, he's produced some great talent that's went on to high schools and even to college and became even greater talent. So just know he, he got his flowers. I promise he got them. And he, like he said, he knows. So it ain't no big deal for me. He gonna get them. We just didn't have a showdown. Battle of the Romans this year, so.
or last year. But we'll get it done. We're going to take care of them. I promise I'm going to take care of y'all. So cool. All right, bro, man. I appreciate the time, man. Man, no problem with that, man. Man, anytime you want to hit me back up, man, you know where to find me. For sure. All right, for the rest of Chop Nation, man, listen, always remember for the rest of your life, the chops don't stop. Peace. Chops.